Now, we've been discussing top Democrats debating right now whether to start impeachment proceedings, but one thing that many agree on is whatever you call these hearings, there's a growing clamor for Mueller to testify publicly, to get his insights and thought process on things that aren't just in the report, which would include potentially his clashes with Barr, the team's internal deliberations, his reasoning behind decisions, including the controversial ones, like not forcing Trump to testify. Now, Mueller's famously tight-lipped. Hearing from him, Democrats and many other experts say could inform our understanding of all of this and whether the House wants to impeach or not. And that's the context for something that I'm going to tell you right now that you may not have heard about because it is brand new, an alleged peak deep inside Mueller's operation. And this comes from Michael Wolff's new book, Siege, Trump Under Fire. Wolf claims that he obtained parts of several written memos from inside Mueller's office for the first time. Now, we've read them, which is why I'm talking to you about it. These quotes from these memos explore the heart of Mueller's legal powers. These memos explore what Mueller and his team might do in doomsday scenarios, including the biggie, what if Trump fired Mueller or issued blanket pardons to effectively end the whole probe. So whatever you think of all these Trump books that come out and how accurate are they, this is big stuff with long quotes allegedly from inside Mueller's office. So we did what we do around here. I personally asked the Justice Department and Mueller's former spokesman, now former because he quit, of course, resigned, whether these quotes from the memos were accurate. And this is all I can tell you. The DOJ declined to comment on it at all or, and this is important, or to object to the veracity of these memos on the record. If they objected, I would tell you that. Now, what do we have here? Mueller's team basically discussing what would they do if Trump fired Mueller, and they were discussing this in a very real way. The New York Times and others reporting Trump was trying to do that. Now, Wolf says Mueller's team did what lawyers do. They got a team together. They researched the law. They looked in a fair way, not to just defend themselves, but to try to understand, could Donald Trump as president fire the special counsel? And Wolf says in his book, quoting the memos that they determined Trump could order Jeff Sessions to basically fire Mueller, fire the special counsel directly, or revoke the rules that would prohibit that. Now, let me read to you exactly what the DOJ said, because that's an important part when you have these kind of stories. This is what the DOJ tells me today. We can only refer you to the report and Mr. Mueller's statement last week. Now, as you may know, sometimes the Justice Department and other agencies that have secrecy, like the CIA even, they will sometimes say, we're not going to comment, but on background, they'll wave you off. They'll say, look, Ari, this really is not real stuff. They didn't do that here. Now, I want to bring in our experts to get through a couple of these items. Ellie Mistal, executive editor of Above the Law, and former federal prosecutor John Flannery. Uh, John, when you look at the quote we just read, which Wolf says is from written analysis that the Mueller folks did, and it shows that they basically came to a legal view that Trump could end the probe by firing him. How do you think that might affect their deliberations and their decisions? Well, I think they were very concerned that in September they were going to have to be renewed in terms of funding, and if not, they were over. And I think that was an intimidation for a bureaucratic-oriented special counsel. But this happened in March of 2018, and that's significant because they proposed three things in that memo, a 56-page memo. One, the three articles, uh, three rather charges against the president Secondly, that they had the legal opinion that you could indict a sitting president. And the third thing was whether or not they could fire uh, Mueller. And they decided that the special counsel uh, regs that they had, uh, if, if, the, if the attorney general were to say they were not effective, then the president could fire Mueller. They also asked whether so or not the president... That, just on yeah. that point, right? So, yeah. so again, DOJ is not saying tonight that that's not the case. They have disputed other things, as right. we know. If that's, the, if that's what the Mueller folks thought, does that, in your mind, explain a little bit of why maybe Mueller held back on pushing hard for the interview? Well, it says something worse. It says that his report is a lie in the sense that uh, he has publicly said we've never considered indicting, and he says that he couldn't. And here's an intervening event. March of 2018, they have this 56-page memo. Well, it's June of 2018 when we have an unsolicited 
opinion by Barr that goes to Rosenstein and goes to the White House counsel saying that you can't prosecute obstruction, which were the object crimes in the draft memo. And let so, me play and, a little bit. Wolf has yeah. been weighing in on some of this. Let's play some of that. Take a look. Right. And the conclusion is, yes, the president could fire Robert, Robert Mueller. What happens to the work product, they ask, if they are fired? Well, the chance is that, that it, it could be, the possibility is it could be completely destroyed. Mm -hmm. Robert Mueller looked at this and said, you, you know, this guy, Donald Trump, could, could bring the house down, could bring the temple down. Mm -hmm. Ellie? The temple down. I mean, like, as everybody's football coach probably told them at some point, stop worrying about what they're going to do to you, do you and start worrying about what you're going to do to them. Mueller clearly, and we don't even need Michael Wolf for this, Mueller clearly played this game not to lose. That was his main focus, right? And we already know before all of this stuff from Michael Wolf's book, right, we already know that Mueller didn't go as hard as he could have to get an actual sit-down interview with Donald Trump. We already know that... And and, and, and slow down, though. I'm just gonna I'm gonna move you a little bit. I see you got a bunch of views, but on the memo part, man. What I'm asking, though, do you think that this? means that they that Trump got in their head in a way. Yes, that's I think exactly that happened. I think they were I think it was the it's like the old Mike Tyson thing where like he would win the fight before he got into the mm. ring because people were scared of him. Mueller, I think, and this goes to this institutionalist aspect of Mueller's investigation, he was more concerned with his own institution, with his own part of the store than he was with the rest of the house burning down. Right. Which is which which you say as someone who cares a lot, I know from talking to you before about the underlying allegations, the issues with Donald Trump, right? So people hear that and say, oh, well, I heard so many good things about Mueller. Well, there are many good things about Mueller, particularly his nonpartisanship and his integrity. Uh, but you're both gesturing towards, I think, what's so fascinating about these reports. And sometimes when investigations end, we learn more stuff, is what was going on inside if they were concerned about this stuff. I want to do pardons as well. The book says Mueller's team considered the idea that Trump could just pardon everybody, Flynn, family members. And this was their conclusion, John, quote, according to Wolf, this is quoting what he says was Mueller's office. The president can pardon his family members or close associates, even for the purpose of impeding investigations. Your view, John? Well, I don't believe you can. I do believe that they thought they were a unitary executive, and they sort of had the Nixon corollary. If the president says it's the law, so it is, because the president said it. And I, I think that the people around him and in Justice Department, both Rosenstein and Barr, they all believe that. But the fact of the matter is it's an old statement, and the Department of Justice had this ruling that you can't be a judge in your own, uh, in your own matter. Mm -hmm. So you can't give yourself a pardon. You can't give your family members a pardon. You can't do any of these things. And that if that were tested in court, that yeah. would be found to be failure. Now, let me I ask think. you the Defective. toughest question, which is the one I'm really wondering, and I don't have the answer. I'm really wondering, John. Yeah. If Wolf is on the right track, if these quotes are substantially in the ballpark of what was being internally discussed, um, why would this be coming out, do you think? Well, I think it's coming out because uh, one of the, the author of the March uh, publication, Andrew Weissman, he's the one who wrote this report. He was the strongest prosecutor by public and private accounts of the entire team. Uh, he was a junkyard dog. And <laughs> if, if it came from Let anybody... Let me give the same question to Ellie. Yeah, uh, yeah I him. mean, be I think because they're slightly embarrassed about what's happening to them right now, right? Like, the, like the, the Mueller team, with all of their honor, with all of their integrity, people are starting to see that they did not go as far as they could have. And I think that if this is really leaking to Michael Wolff, part, part of the reason why they're leaking is like, oh, well, we were, he could have pardoned this guy. Right. He would have destroyed Which evidence. Which is why, what you're saying, and I think you're right on to mm -hmm. it. Again, I'm not confirming that. No, no one here is confirming who leaked what if this is if this is the memo, but the reason that some lawyers might be talking later now that Mueller's resigned, as you say, is to explain and make themselves look better right. as they sit around and try to explain to everyone after all this, why did it end like that? Which is, which is an interesting theory. Again, I want to repeat my thanks to Ellie and John. John, I want you to stay with me. Yes. And I want to repeat my caveats, which is we reached out to DOJ for comment. We'll update further if we get more. And Mr. Wolf's reporting has been, I think he would acknowledge as well, publicly attacked by a lot of folks about credibility. Uh, but this is certainly interesting quotes if, uh, if DOJ is not telling us they're not real. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.